Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to be going over the pound yen second quarter review and why did this pair trend 1,935 pips? And so, um, a lot of traders will. Uh, you know, claim that the reason why it did was due to some sort of technical analysis, some sort of Elliott wave indicator, etc. It's that's all nonsense, right? It doesn't matter what your swing trading technical strategy is or any technical strategy that you have and employ in the markets. It's the fundamental and risk sentiment analysis decisions by institutions that is the determining factor of large price movements. You need to know what the driving force and why institutions are buying and selling and then the ones that are creating the price action that we trade and so if they're creating the price action then they're not looking always 100 at the price action there are things going on outside of the technicals a lot of times um and all of the time matter of fact that uh, will determine whether a currency will go higher in the future or lower or just stay within um, a certain range and those things uh, in forex come down to um, interest rates gdp and inflation and really you know the forex uh, fundamentals the basics right and so if you haven't watched my previous video on the euro dollar q1 review right where i explain this exact same thing uh you can watch that if you haven't watched it anyway um definitely watch it but uh, this is just going to be a quick overview um of in case you're new to you know forex fundamentals of what you really should be looking at um from a from a real kind of basic perspective so gross domestic product of a country right uh, when you had when you have growth you typically that typically leads to currency appreciation and if you have a contraction or recession that leads to currency devaluation or depreciation yeah um and number two is going to be inflation right and so you need to first of all have gdp if you're looking to buy have gdp on your side or against you whether you want to go long or short and then you also need to look at inflation and inflation is a two percent uh uh, central bank target and central banks are mandated to uh, achieve this 2% inflation target by either hiking, holding or cutting interest rates. Now, um, inflation from a very basic perspective, um, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, the 2% mandate, right? And so inflation is actually uh, currency devaluation. So the central bank target at 2% is saying that they are willing to let inflation devalue every year at 2% and that's fine. Um, and that is an acceptable currency devaluation, yeah? Um, now, if inflation starts to, starts to rise above the 2% target, then that is unacceptable currency devaluation. And if um, inflation starts to go below 2%, and um, goes into the negative, that in fact is unacceptable currency appreciation. Yeah, so rising inflation is currency devaluation, and in fact, anything below 2%, which would be considered deflation, is actually currency appreciation. Now, to can or to counteract uh, currency appreciation or unacceptable currency devaluation and appreciation central banks either hold rates interest rates they hike interest rates or they uh, cut interest rates and so when the um, inflation when inflation is at an acceptable currency devaluation level at two percent they will typically hold rates if inflation starts to rise above um, their 2% target and is continuing to rise above their 2% target. They need to get inflation back down to the 2% target, which means that they are likely to hike rates. Yeah, so if inflation is above 2%, that equals a hike and that leads to currency appreciation to counter currency devaluation. And 
if current if the currency and inflation sorry is below the two percent that is unacceptable currency appreciation and so what central banks will do is actually cut rates right to depreciate the currency to counter currency appreciation so it's a it's like a balance balancing act is what central banks are doing and as of note uh, it's worth noting that hiking too much um, causes economic contraction simply because on a basic level hiking interest rates um, is basically hiking borrowing and lending costs right if you if you're a business or you're a homeowner uh, you know that you know your your mortgage when when the central bank hikes interest rates you've got to pay more on your mortgage or if you're in a business on any loans that you've taken out and so um, you have less money in your pocket if you know your your outgoings are, are, are rising yeah so um, from that perspective that has a knock-on effect with spending in the economy and can contract um, uh, the economy and so it's very important also to understand that in currency land and I guess in, in any type of uh, uh, trading or investing um, you're looking to buy the rumor sell the fact so you're looking to buy low sell high and how do you know whether you know um, a currency exchange rate is low or any kind of you know stock investment or property investment is high or low you need to understand the fundamentals first of all to then get a certain valuation and also anticipate what may be coming in the future to decide whether prices are likely to go higher or lower right and again in in currencies we do that by anticipating what the central bank is likely to do with interest rates by watching inflation and gdp and so let's look at the central bank policy differentials for the pound yen in the second quarter of 2023 and so the second quarter starts from april um, and the quarter is uh, april may and june and so um what we're looking for is really divergences in currencies right so we need to look at again from a really kind of basic level is looking at what central banks are trying to do with their interest rates right because if we go back in fact if a central bank is hiking rates, what are they looking to do? They're looking to appreciate their currency, yeah? And if a central bank is looking to cut rates, they're looking to devalue and depreciate their currency. Um, and if they're looking to um, hold rates, then they're not looking to do anything with their currency, right? They're looking, they're, they're happy or satisfied with, you know, the currency valuation. And so um, we're looking at the pound. Right, so the pound versus the yen, and so looking strictly from a central bank currency um, uh, interest rate um, hiking or holding or cutting uh, policy, we can then determine the strength of one currency versus another. So, with the pound, the pound. Um, it, this was from an article from Bloomberg and uh, it said the UK business leaders expect one more interest rate rise or a hike amid signs that they believe inflation is stabilizing at elevated levels according to a survey that forms a key part of the Bank of England's policy discussion. So on one hand you have a central bank that is looking to hike rates. Yep, so rates potentially hiking one more time. Now in Japan, you have the Bank of in um, you have the Bank of Japan maintained its rock bottom interest rates and asset purchase settings at the end of two day gathering Friday, as expected by almost ninety percent of economists surveyed by Bloomberg, and so they are maintaining their rock bottom interest rate. Um, um, uh, which is basically zero point minus zero point one percent, right? And so you have one central bank that is hiking, one central bank that is um, uh, looking to hold. Now, Ueda, who is the governor of the Bank of Japan, um, was uh, sworn in, I guess, if you want to say sworn in, or he was elected, and he was actually quite dovish when it came to um, uh, uh, monetary policy now there was before this into march there was some speculation that they the bank of japan could have adjusted um their monetary policy to the point where 
it would have the effect of appreciating their currency. This was yield curve control, YCC, but they elected, in fact, or Rader elected to actually keep rates on hold. So we had one central bank that was hiking rates and the other that was looking to hold rates. And so what happened on the charts during April? Going to the charts, and zoom in a little bit. And again, just to kind of point out, I guess, on the chart that price has moved um, 1,300, no, 1,935 pips. This was the low in April, yeah, low in April to the current high. Um, I'm recording this on Monday, the oh, sorry, Tuesday, the uh, 20th of of June, and um, the high at the moment was uh, 1,935 pips. But focusing on, um, we're looking at uh, uh, April, month of April, one central bank, which is the pound hiking rates and the Japanese yen, Bank of Japan, not looking to hike rates. That was going to be the, or should have been the expected um, uh, price action, right? Pound increasing in strength, the yen, uh, you know, not doing anything. And so you would expect prices to trend which they did so we found out what happened in the month of april now going to may right and the bank of england um monetary money markets have shifted quickly in the uk investors have fully priced in a quarter point interest rate increase this month and are wagering the bank will uh in continue climbing to above 4.9 percent in september even then, traders were betting on a terminal rate um, above 5%. And so in May, again, when we talk about buying the rumor, buying the rumor meaning what is the central bank likely to do in the future, investors were saying that they are likely to continue to hike rates and even you know hike rates a lot higher right um, than it was currently in May. And so that was being priced in. So again, central bank, the Bank of England still continuing to high rates, yeah. And the Bank of Japan, um, looking at the Bank of Japan, uh, Governor Ueda uh, indicated his desire to hold on to policy flexibility by playing down the importance of wages or any single economic data set as a trigger for change. So he was kind of downplaying any kind of inflation moves. Um, as though he didn't really necessarily think they were important to start to hike rates. He says the governor indicated that he sees no immediate need to join the global wave of inflation fighting. Inflation fighting means if inflation goes higher, then they have to obviously hike rates, right? And he said there's no need for that, saying that the higher cost of living is still being led by cost push factors. And so pretty much he was remaining dovish. He was still holding rates. So you had one central bank hiking, one central bank holding, just like we did the previous month. And so what should that mean on a price chart? So what happened during May? May, we had pretty much the same thing, right? We've got a bit of a pullback. Anybody who was looking for a bit more of a bargain price um, got one, you know, in May around these areas here and prices continued to trend. It's a no brainer, right? Now, going to the final quarter, uh, the final month of the quarter, the pound yen in June. So Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey warned that inflation in the UK is sticky and taking longer to come down after shock data that fueled bets on higher interest rates. So um, the Bank of England and the UK had really high inflation and still do in, in comparison to Europe and the US. And um, because of that, the market was pricing in more rate hikes because we understand if you're a fundamental analysis trader and you understand the basics that high inflation will lead to a central bank looking to continue to hike rates, right? So once again, we had a central bank that is hiking rates, yeah, the Bank of, bank of England. Now the Bank of Japan, you know, uh, officials, see little need to adjust its yield curve control program. And again, just yield curve control, uh, if they adjusted it, it would mean in fact, it's a way of um, 
uh, central banks to appreciate their currency, so they see little need to do that at, the, at a policy meeting, meeting next week, given the improvement in the functioning of the bond market and the smooth shape of the yield curve, according to people familiar with the matter. So the rumor was that the Bank of Japan will continue to pretty much um, stay stand pat or you know stay on hold and not adjust monetary policy to uh, look to appreciate their currency yeah and so again what happened in june you guessed it you guessed it we had even more even a higher move right and so for the whole quarter this is if we're looking at purely interest rate divergences in terms of what central banks were doing with interest rates um this was uh predictable right or and i, didn't, I don't want to use um you know it's a 100 percent guarantee because there are other things involved in the valuation of a currency but interest rate divergence is uh one of one of the most important um uh, factors in understanding uh, where prices may likely go in the future so when we look at the uh pound yen you know, Q2 fundamental review. And we look at GDP, for example, uh, GDP, so the left axis is for um, for the pound and the right is for the yen. And what we saw in the last couple of quarters um, was that the, um, the, the UK economy pretty much grew 0.1% uh, kind of flatlined over the last two quarters in January and April but it was expected in fact to go into a recession last year so in fact the fact that it didn't never it didn't go into a recession um, and maintained its uh, positive even though uh, it's very small but positive growth though seen as actually a positive for the for the UK and uh, similar um, GDP growth in Japan where you had uh, negative growth last year and then you started to have um, uh, GDP kind of rise above that um, zero um, growth, which is you have two negative quarters, that means a recession. And then you also have the, you know, the yen growing currently at 0.5%. So pretty much a bit better than the UK at the moment. But, um, uh, you know, over the past uh, quarter, both central banks, also both, both economies um, weren't going into a recession. But what is what was really important to central bank policy was the fact that you had UK inflation and on the left hand side um, going into, you know, April, um, February, March and April, uh, you have inflation at around that nine, nine point point five, ten percent from February, March into April. Right. So it's gone down a bit, eight point five percent. Whereas when you look at J Japanese inflation currently over the last, you know, couple of uh, months you've had inflation really at three percent three point five percent so you've had higher inflation in the uk which means that the central bank the bank of england have to be more aggressive in their hiking right and which 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 they were which is the reason why you saw a uh, currency appreciation and that's shown in the uk interest rates you can see um interest rates from august last year rising continuing to rise and then you have the japanese interest rate the bank of japan kept their interest rates on hold and so that divergence between central banks and their monetary policies especially over the last quarter you know is the result of what we see here on a price chart and so um going to the notes and things that you must be aware of is risk on a risk off sentiment during that time there was a credit crunch fears due to bank failures and the japanese yen um typically and historically does react to risk off events although um in the last quarter it really hasn't it's not a guarantee that it will the market was more focused on um you know the return that they you know may get from putting their money into a higher yielding currency than they were about 
the banking crisis. And so in this scenario, in the last quarter scenario, um, the risk off flows and safe haven flows didn't necessarily go into the yen. And so um, although it does look, you know, like a brilliant chart in terms of, you know, nice and easy, it, wasn't, it wouldn't have been necessarily easy to hold on to that trade you know, all the way and capture, you know, 1,935 pips, right? But if you had, um, you know, you know, got in and out and just had a simple direction um, of travel, you could have captured um, a decent amount. Also as well, the carry trade. So the carry trade is where um, you, well, traders take advantage of the difference in interest rates between two economies to borrow where the rate is low and invest where the rate is high. And so you can see on this chart that the yen is the only negative yielding currency. So what traders are doing is they're borrowing actually at negative uh, rates and investing and putting their money into higher yielding currencies like the New Zealand dollar, the US dollar, the pound, right? And so you're borrowing for pretty much you know zero right but you're investing in a currency creating demand for that currency at a higher rate they're making the difference between the two and so that's going to create demand or less than uh, or less demand for the japanese yen and actually increase demand and more demand for those higher yielding currencies and so that has also weighed on um, the uh, the yen um, and continues to wait on the yen until the Bank of Japan actually decide that they may want to adjust yield curve control, which giving you the heads up, it looks like they are looking to do sometime this year. Rumors are it could be from you know July, August, September. Um, but again, um, it's the rumor and um, uh, let's see what happens with that. So data, must support the narrative and so there's no point in buying the pound if for example inflation is coming down to their two percent target because the central bank is likely to end up holding rates um as inflation starts to come you know down so if you're looking to buy any not just the pound but any uh, currency uh, looking at inflation in gdp is important and that data must support the narrative if you're in a trade um, you can basically get in and out of trades or look to take profit um, or hold on for longer depending on whether the data is supporting your trade. So if the data doesn't support your trade, then you can look to take profit. If the data is still supporting your trade, then you can look to continue to hold. Um, trade probability, we trade in probabilities, there are no certainties, right? And so, um, you know, there are other factors that do drive the valuation of currencies. It's not just interest rates. Um, there are risk sentiment um, uh, factors and some other factors as well that do uh, from time to time um, uh, dictate the valuation of a currency, but we're trading in probabilities. So you may have a time where a central bank might be hiking rates but in fact, prices may go down. There are times where that happens. That's beyond the scope of this video as to the reasons why. But ultimately, look to trade the probabilities, manage your risk, and understand that there are no certainties in trading. And think macro. So basically, think of the higher time frames, um, daily, weekly time frames when looking at um, you know your trades. You can obviously go down into lower time frames to enter and try to get. Um, you know, a really nice risk reward trade, but ultimately think uh, and, and always observe what price is doing, um, especially when you're looking for pullbacks uh, to buy on a daily time frame or weekly time frame chart. And it will always be a pullback, right? There's always going to be an opportunity. So don't FOMO into, into, into trades on a lower time frame because a lot of traders end up being caught out on the wrong side uh, of the market buying at highs. Remember, you want to buy low, sell high. And there's always going to be an opportunity to do that um, with fundamentals directional bias doesn't really change too often you know um, once you have a directional uh, a fundamental bias um, they can last a trade idea can last for you know you've seen this one last for a whole quarter right three months if all you were doing was buying the pound yen then that you know that that would have been it right you don't need to necessarily always keep switching from 
um, this currency to that currency and trade ideas can last for months and even years. I had a trade idea that lasted for maybe about nearly two years. It was the euro dollar back in maybe uh, 2019, 2020, something like that. Um, when I was just shorting the uh, the euro dollar for yeah about maybe about eighteen to twenty months, so uh, directional bias doesn't change often. It's not a week to week thing. For example, what am I buying? Am I buying the pound this week? Am I selling the pound this week? No, no, no. You can just continue to buy the pound and wait for pullbacks and wait for better prices in order to get you know long on the pound. Um, you know if you can if you think that you know the data is still going to continue to support the narrative. Personally, I think it's actually coming to a bit of an end. But again, that's beyond the scope of this video. And finally, if you have uh, maybe any quarter three Forex pair suggestions you want me to analyze, um, you know, put it in the um, description box below in the comments. Uh, I'd love to get your feedback on the video. And um, yeah, the uh, I guess the pair with the most um, recommendations is the one that I will um, do for the Q3 and so finally mentoring is available for a short time only um, it's currently the 20th of June 2023 I'm closing my mentoring I think it's on the on Friday the 23rd of June so you have a few days left if you do want to be mentored by me and really apply uh, the fundamentals and learn how to apply the fundamentals to your technical analysis trading um, and access the private discord community as well as fundamental the fundamental analysis spreadsheet videos tutorials um, and a whole lot more um, you know live group calls on every wednesday then uh, go to trading180.com and sign up um, if not i hope you enjoyed the video um, and i hope you get some really good value from this video and it really kind of sets you on at least the path to incorporate fundamental analysis into your trading so that you can get some better trade results all right take care and uh, speak to you all soon